please. I got negative x squared plus 10x minus 29. Like this? Does that look right to you? Yeah. OK. Um, there is a small sign error. So let's just put this off to the side here. Should have gotten when you foiled x squared minus 5x minus 5x plus 25. I'm guessing that might have been the sign error. You have to negate everything. So it's negative x squared minus, uh, I'm sorry, plus 10x, because that goes to minus 25 plus 4. So this becomes minus x squared plus 10x minus 21. So where is your, where is your, difference do you see um i think i had the four inside the parentheses so then i did plus 25 plus four which became 29 and then tw negative or positive 29 times the negative outside when you're uh, distributing it that's how i got the negative 29 okay well um here is this is the standard form okay and standard form you can do a lot of things in standard form uh generally when you're trying to find the vertex in standard form you have to do you have to use formulas okay do you know what i mean by that or is that totally unclear uh -huh. So, so standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. A is the number in front of x squared. B is the number in front of x. C is the number in front of minus 21. Yeah. Okay. So what is the value of a, b, and c in this one right here? It would be negative 1 for a. Uh, for b, it'd be 10. And for c, it's negative 24. 21. 21. Okay. All right, so the vertex, the x coordinate of the vertex is minus b over 2a. Could you calculate that for us, please? Minus b over 2a would be So it's minus 10 over 2 times negative 1. Yeah, so then it'd be negative 10 over 2, which is 10 over 2. And then you would so that's, you know, simplify it down so you'd get right. 5 over 1, right. which is 5. Okay. All right, good. So to get the y-coordinate of the vertex, you put the x value back into the uh, function okay so here is the function right here
you have to find h of five. And we talked about this idea that the variable is in parentheses. You're substituting in the variable like this. Will you uh, will you simplify that for? Me? I got four. Now, we shouldn't be surprised that your vertex is five comma four because guess what it was in vertex form? Five comma three, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, but the, the, but compare like yeah, and but think about the difficulty. Like here, you just read it off. In this form, you had to do a lot of calculations. Yeah. Okay. Now you might be wondering, well, then why why would you even want standard form? Well, there are some things that standard form does allow you to determine. But truthfully, the, the only one that really is all that easy is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is always this last number. You can sometimes get the x-intercept by setting the function equal to 0 and then factoring. But that's not always the best option meaning that it doesn't always work. Uh, you might learn some other approaches, like completing the square. Yeah, that's what we did. Quadratic formula. OK. We completed the square. And then... Well, we should maybe uh, complete the square um, uh, as like a lesson today. Uh, if if you want, or we can kind of keep yeah. going through this. There's going to be one more progression here, which is taking this, and the, oops, that's not what I wanted. Um, taking this this right here and putting it into factored form. So we can take it from standard form to factored form. Sometimes, okay, not not always, but. To do that, we're going to first factor out the negative one for everything. So it's x squared minus 10x plus 21. And to factor this, you're looking for two numbers that multiply to 21, but then add to negative 10. Okay. So can you think of those two numbers that multiply to 21, but add to negative 10? Oh, multiply to 21. Um, 7 and 3. So those don't add to uh, negative 10. They just add okay. to 10. So they have to be negative uh, 3 and negative and 7. Negative 7. Yeah, so this becomes x minus 3, x minus 7. And this is factored form. So what, what does factored form give you? Well, it gives you the x-intercepts. And then it and then it can it can kind of give you other stuff, but mostly it gives you the x-intercepts. Uh, so then yeah, so the x values that you get from that, which is negative three and negative seven would be the x-intercepts. Say that one more time. Um, so the x values that you get from that, which in this case would be negative three comma zero and negative seven comma zero, would be the x-intercepts. You're actually setting the factors equal to zero, so it becomes x equals three, x equals seven. Oh, god.
So you set the factors equal to zero, and that when we get from that would be the x intercepts, right? Three and seven. Yes, it'd be in this case three and seven. Okay. Um well, let's try another one. Kind of like this. Let's do one more of these and we'll do some completing completing the square. But um because it, it is it is typically a test question. We have to go through these progressions. Um so let's say I uh, give you a function j of x equals x plus one squared minus nine. I want you to determine the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Um, so the vertex would be negative one comma negative nine. Okay. In vertex form, and then axis of symmetry would be in x equals negative one. Very good, okay. Now the next thing I want you to do is to expand this to put it into a standard form. All right. Um... All right, I got x squared plus 2x minus 8. Like this? Yep. Okay. Now, I want you to find the vertex again using the, the formula approach, which is x equals minus b over 2a. Get that value. And then you're going to take that and put it back in the function to find the other one. All right. A would be one, B would be two, and C would be negative eight. Good. X. So go ahead negative. and find the value of X. You shouldn't be surprised when you get the result. I got negative one. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. All right. So I want you to put that put that in. Negative five is what you have to plug me in. Okay. Now is that the same as? Is that the same as this? So that's a problem. See how it's not the same? Now, your negative one is correct, but maybe you didn't put it in. So remember, it's really parentheses x squared plus two parentheses x minus eight. So here, let me try it again. Oh, it's, it's, easy to, yeah. it's easy to make a mistake doing it that way. Yeah, I got negative nine now. Okay, good. So you should get the same result. And that's like, that's kind of, if, if you want to, you know, test question, that's kind of the thing. You're minus or minus nine, same result. Okay. So now I want you to tell me the y intercept 
of this, the y-intercept. And, and if you recall, that's when you're putting zero in for x. It'd be negative eight. Okay. All right. Now I want you to factor this. Slip it into factored form. Um, maybe negative two and four. So what? Yes, but what what goes in the parentheses here? So negative two would be so two comma zero. No, and... no, 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 no. Go back and look. Go back and look. What goes in parentheses? So x minus yes yes x minus two and x plus four okay and let's just say another person did it this way would that matter no no the order does not matter okay good all right now why do we do all this it's to find the x intercepts so you said x plus four equals zero and x minus two equal to zero so it would be x equals four and x equals or x equals negative four and x equals two okay good all right you got it you got it all right um now any questions up before we move to completing the square I'll take that as a no. Um, uh, completing this. Yeah. OK, if I uh, start here. Yeah. OK, so the reason you complete the square is to go from standard form to vertex form. So I go from AX squared plus BX plus C to AX minus H squared plus, plus K. We already know how to go the other direction. You, you FOIL 
multiply by the A and then combine like terms. But now we're going to go this direction. And that's what this unit is all about. It's about being able to manipulate and move between stuff like that. So I'll give you some, we're going to go through a bunch of examples here. Let's say it's X squared plus four X. Uh, let's go plus seven. All right. So actually, let me, let me uh, back up here. This is not quite correct. And, and what I'm about to show you may be different than what you see in the classroom, but just go with it for the moment. You may find that you like this method better. They give you some function like this, and they say to complete the square. The first thing that I tell students to do is to set it equal to zero. And then you move this constant term to the other side of the equation. So it's x squared plus 4x equals negative 7. And you'll notice I've left a space. I'm going to put a box here and a box here. All right. And maybe from class, you already know it goes there. Maybe not. There is a formula to get this number, but I do it slightly differently. So instead of just going directly to get, get this, this red number, uh, I want to figure out what goes down here in the binomial. Is this at all looking familiar to you or totally different than what you've seen in the classroom? It seems kind of similar. Okay. So what goes here is half of, of B. And B is positive four, so it's X two. plus two. And then what goes up in the box here is positive two squared, which is plus four. And to be fair, you put plus four here. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So then it's equals negative seven plus four, which is negative three. And then you move, you move the number, the constant, to the other side. So you add three to both sides of the equation. Like that. All right. And then now you're at the... Yeah. So now the idea is that this line right here is equivalent to this line here. Okay, that's, a, that's a nice basic vanilla example. Um, Let's do another one. So let's say f of x equals x squared minus 6x uh, plus 10. Okay. So again, my approach, you set it equal to 0. Move the constant over. You leave a space. And for now, you'll see me drawing these, these boxes. And the, and the idea is to indicate you're going to put the same thing in both, both positions. So what some students do, and I don't like this, but they, 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 they learn that what goes in the box here is b divided by 2 squared, which is sometimes true, but not always true. Um, I, only, I only want you to remember stuff that's always true. Oh, I did. So instead, I like to come down here and figure out, okay, what goes in the binomial here? And it's always half of this. So it's x minus 3 squared. The number that goes in the box is this last one squared. Basically, when you expand x minus 3 times x minus 3, what goes in the box? Plus 9, plus 9. So this equals negative 1. Got it. And then, and then, then you got to move, move it back. Yes, yeah, so you get x minus three squared. And then you're not yet now. So, and that's your that's your new your new function. Okay, so I'm going to give you one to try before we move on to more complicated uh, problems. Um, you probably did this in algebra one, but you probably haven't done it in a while. But that's okay. Um, let me see. I want to pick ones that work out somewhat nicely. Um, yeah. Okay. So here is one for you to try. Uh, x, let's say your function is x squared minus 12x plus 11. Uh, go ahead and give that a try, please. And you would want me to change that into vertex? Yes. Form? Yep. 
I want you to get, uh, and so yeah so the other thing here at side point is that you should then be able to give me the vertex when we're all done um we're not worrying about the right now why we're doing this we're just we're just doing it we're just learning it because there's, there's a some more complicated examples we need to get to All right, I got f of x equals x minus six in parentheses minus uh, squared minus one. Like that? Yeah. All right, so there's a small problem because this does not give you the same as this right here. Let's just take like, um, again, like if you don't, if you don't subtract, this is 11, by the way, if you don't subtract it to the other side, you could run into a, a signer. So it becomes x minus six squared plus 36 plus 36, which is Wait, 25. Wait, it? Oh, uh, the squaring, I got tw positive 12. Where? Uh, for, for instead of 36? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's this number is minus six squared like that. Oh, got it. I think I multiplied it by the two. Wow. Which, yeah, then it would be 36. Okay, let's have you try another one here. F, and, and I'm going to switch letters here. We're going to go n squared minus 2n minus 3. Go ahead and complete the square on this one, please. All right, I got f of n equals n minus 1 squared minus 4. Okay, that is correct. Good. Okay, so um, the these are all the easy ones, and you're probably going to get much harder ones in your classroom. Uh, so um, one of the ones you might see next is something where there's a um, a number that is not divisible by 2. So it'd be like x squared plus three X um, minus eight, okay? And um, it's the same process. It's just, it's just awkward because when you, when you move the number to the other side and you now have to fill this right here, you realize, okay, I'm gonna take half, half of 
the number in the middle there, three, half of three is three over two. And then what goes there? Well, you're squaring, you're squaring three over two. So it's nine over four, nine over four. Okay, so it's it's doable, it's just awkward, we'll say. Right. And then on the right here, you have to combine fractions, which you know, if you haven't done that in a while, that could be an issue. They've got to have the same denominator. So you multiply the top and bottom by this denominator. This is 32 over 4 plus 9 over 4. So you end up getting x plus 3 over 2 squared equals 41 over 4. And then you, you move it. You get x plus 3 over 2 squared minus 41 over 4 as your, your function here. Got it. Does that look like an example you might have seen in class? I think so, yeah, where it ends up the fraction there, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So... You know, I mean, they, they, we'll have you, I'll have you try one now. Let's say it's f of x equals x squared plus 5x um, minus 3 fourths. So why don't you try completing the square on this? Kind of works out nice, kind of. All right. I got x plus 2.5 squared uh, minus 4.6875. Oh, uh, okay. This was supposed to work out nicer. Let me just run through some steps here in case. So it should be x squared plus 5x equals 3 fourths. And then you're taking half of 5, so 5 over 2. Uh, that... to leave it as like a 
fraction. Uh, yeah, okay. now you can go to decimals, but when you square a fraction here, you get plus 25 over 4, plus 25 over 4. And I was trying to give you one that worked out sort of nice, which is 28 so over 4. So then it'd be minus 25 over 4. Uh, so it'd be x plus 5 over 2 squared minus 20. 25 over 4. No, no you, you have to move the constant to the other side of the equation. Yeah, so that when, when you add it to, oh, and then you have to add it to that, all right, then you, you know, you would get um, x plus 5 over 2 squared minus 7. As uh, so well, you're subtracting 7. Okay, we got to get you got to get one of these fraction ones down. I mean, the, the, these will come up. Um, they're not meant to be impossible. Let's go x squared plus one uh, x um, plus five over four. Okay, so uh, same thing here. Give this a try. It does work out kind of nicely. All right, I got um, f of x equals x plus one half squared plus one. It's very good. Okay, uh, but you're gonna you may be gonna see something with a fraction. Okay, that that's that's one of the oddities. The next type of oddities for completing the square CTS completing the square is is when you have a number in front besides one. So like like we've been doing a bunch of problems, I guess, like x squared minus 8x uh, minus 12, for example, plus 12, we'll say. Now, what if I put a negative in front? So what if I change the sign of all these? So it's negative x squared plus 8x minus 12. What do you do in this scenario? Okay, so that's one. This is where it's a little bit different. We're not doing this problem. We're doing the one here and, you, and you're asked to complete the square. So like like most things in math, you turn it into something that you already know know how to do, okay? And you do that by factoring out the negative one. So it's negative one, x squared minus eight x plus 12 equals zero, like that, okay? Now, the problem is, let me back up. Let me back up. Sorry. It's not correct. I'm violating what I already said. Yes, we will factor that out, but not quite yet. First thing we always do is add the constant to the other side of the equation. So I do make mistakes, and that was a big one. You, you do always add that constant to the other side of the equation. Now, now is when you factor out the negative one. So you have a negative one factored out, x squared minus 8x equals 12. Now notice, notice there's a space here and a space here, but they are not the same, okay? So there is something that goes here and something that goes here, but it is not the same as what goes, goes here. We're going to get to that in a moment. And that's, that's the difference here between these. 
All right, so the next part here is, is you, you take half of this number eight, put it there. Right. And, then the, and then the number that goes here is, is negative four squared, which is 16. And normally that's what you put on both sides of the equation. But because you factor out this negative one, you actually um, have to change what goes in here because the previous line is negative one times each of these. So the number that goes in the box here is actually negative 16, negative 16. And the, and the reason is, is you factor out a negative from it, you get positive 16. Or if you think about multiplying back in, that's negative 16. So that's the little the little wrinkle there for this. All right, so on the right side, it's negative four. You have to bring down this negative one. Negative x minus four squared. And then you add four, you get this coming back to the other side. Negative x minus four squared plus four, like that. Got it. So we're, I'm going to do one more example here. That's probably all time will allow for. But it is, um, you know, we're not going to make these super difficult. Let's just say f of x is x negative x squared minus 2x plus 3, like that. First thing you always do is move the number to the other side of the equation. You always do that. Minus x squared minus 2x equals minus 3. Leave a space. And um, we're going to fill this in. But before we do that, we have to factor out this, this negative. If it's x squared plus 2x, Leave a space. So now uh, the part inside parentheses is the part that that um, uh, we complete the square out. So that becomes x plus one squared. It's always half. You're always dividing by two half. And then the number goes back here is is squaring it which is plus one, but that's not what goes in the box here. What goes in the box when you distribute by negative one, negative one, negative one. So it ends up equaling negative four. Bring the negative one down, and then you add four to both sides like that. Got it. All right. So we uh, we definitely need some more time to get